Greeting psychology students. Today we're going to look at aphantasia in the context of the VCE course, specifically in relation to the ability to construct a imagined future or difficulty with autobiographical memory. So keep that in mind. And what makes this a quite intriguing aspect of the VCE course is that it's very difficult to be able to fully empathize with people who experience aphantasia. So therefore we work with a lot of the anecdotal statements that we see on this slide to be able to contextualize uh, the condition. And it's great to see this getting a bit of press by the ABC News website as of April 2024, I pulled this article. A couple of people who, academics who experience variations of the condition have published an article and the ABC has jumped all over this. Always great when we can relate course content to everyday news. And there's a good analogy in the article where one of the authors says, well, when I look at this object on the left, all I see is a bunch of 2D shapes. So if you can't use that mental imagery required in order to form a 3D representation. And likewise with this, image on the right, which most of us can um, visualize a face, the author just sees a mop. And a simple but common test for aphantasia is to ask an individual to close their eyes and visualize an apple. Most of us are at this end of the spectrum. We can easily visualize using our inner eye an apple. Somebody who experiences aphantasia, they're at this end of the spectrum. They can imagine semantic aspects of the apple. So they can imagine how big it is, what color it is. They'd be able to say it's red. They just can't visualize it. So if we look at the origin of the word, a meaning without, aphantasia meaning imagination, that's oversimplifying aphantasia because they can use imagination semantically. It's just they have difficulty with the visualization aspect of it. So I quite like this hashtag like explanation. So experience a blind mind in terms of the difficulty or inability to use visual imagery in terms of either retrieving an autobiographical memory from the past or indulging in episodic future thinking which are features of area study number two in the unit three course. So when trying to retrieve or reconstruct an autobiographical memory, there's a combining of the semantic memory of the personal facts with the episodic memory in terms of the sensory details, which might include thoughts, objects, people, feelings. And so somebody with aphantasia is going to have difficulty with this because of their inability to use their mind's eye in order to help them reconstruct that memory from the past. For example, let's say you're trying to retrieve a memory of when you went to a school formal. This retrieval process is all about reconstruction because we need to reconstruct that memory by combining the semantic memory, which provides a framework in terms of those personal facts, such as the date of the formal, the name of the venue, with the episodic details, such as those sensory experiences that enable you to use your mind's eye to visualize who were the people on your table, to visualize the dance floor, some of the props that were there. So someone who has a fantasia is going to have great difficulty with the episodic aspects of that. So they'll be able to remember that they went to a formal. They'll be able to remember that they had a good time at the formal, but they won't be able to do what you do to be able to use your mind's eye and visualize aspects of that. Similar with constructing an imagined future. For example, Let's say you're trying to imagine yourself at schoolies at the end of the year on your favorite beach. So that requires you to combine some semantic knowledge, such as the name of the beach, the dates when you're going to be there, along with some episodic knowledge 
in terms of those sensory experiences you've had at that beach, like the feel of the waves um, crashing into your body, the feel of the warmth sun, the sounds, the sights. Again, it's all of these sensory experiences that you can use your mind's eye, your mind's ear. And so therefore, with someone with aphantasia is going to have great difficulty with this because they can't use that mental imagery process.